We talked about this a little bit last class, but when is the inverse of a function also, sorry, when is the inverse of a function also a function, we can say that when the original function passes the horizontal line test, then the inverse will be a function, which will mean it will pass the vertical line test. So some examples, like a parabola doesn't pass the horizontal line test, if you want to find the inverse, the inverse won't be a function. Unless we do something to restrict the domain or only take part of the parabola. And that leads into our third example. Whoa, two. Which says, determine two ways to restrict the domain of this parabola so that its inverse is a function. Oh, did I go too fast? I get, I get excited sometimes about what we're going to do. So just let me know. I can go back. So right now we have a parabola. And this parabola, if I draw a horizontal line, obviously doesn't pass the horizontal line test. There's lots of places where I could put that horizontal line, which touches the graph twice. However, if I only took half of the parabola, for example, if I only started at my vertex and did the green side, can you see that if I only used the green side, the green side passes the horizontal line test. But the green and the red together do not. And so how do we restrict the domain so that I only have the green side? Well, I'm going to put a number one because it says determine two ways. So the first way is the green side. How is my domain restricted? I'm only looking when x is bigger than or equal to 1. This would be. a restricted domain. Now we want to write the equation of the inverse for this. How do we find an equation of an inverse? We switch the x and the y. So I'm going to switch the x and the y. x equals y minus 1 squared plus 3. Move the 3 over to get the squared by itself. Square root both sides, and I would get plus or minus. And so getting y by itself by adding 1 to both sides, I would have 1 plus or minus the square root of x minus 3. Now, if I did the inverse of the green graph, okay? What's going to happen to the point 3 comma 1? It's going to go to 1 comma 3. If I take another point, it looks like we have 3 comma, oh, sorry, that's not 3 comma 1. I labeled those wrong. It's 1 comma 3. And here's 3 comma 1. And if I look at another point on my graph, it looks like I've got 3 comma 7. So I would have 7 comma 3. There's the inverse 
image of the green part. Now that equation is a square root equation. Will it be, right, I'm going to write these as two possibilities. I'm going to write one with the positive and the plus one. You see how that plus one could go in front? Or I could write it at the end of my, and I'll write it at the end so it fits more with my transformations. Or it could be y equals negative x minus three. Those are the two possibilities with the plus or minus. Which equation is that inverse? Is it going to be the positive one or is it going to be the negative one? If we think about our transformations, this is a square root graph. Move three to the right and one up. This is a square root graph first flipped over the x-axis, then move three to the right and one up. Has our square root graph been flipped? No. So the equation for the first part, for the first restricted domain, is this one. And one way that you could figure out it's this one is, like I did, to actually draw the graph. The second way to find out that it would be that one is if you think that your domain is restricted to be x is bigger than or equal to 1, can you see that on your inverse, that would mean y has to be bigger than or equal to 1. Because on inverses, x and y switch. So if the domain is x is bigger than or equal to 1 on the original function, that means the range will be y is bigger than or equal to 1 on the inverse function. And if the y values are bigger than or equal to 1, that means your square root has to be going up, which only makes sense with the positive and not the negative. So that's a second way that you could know that this first one has to be the positive one. Now, for our second restricted domain, number two, actually I'll do number two in red because it will match up with the red part of our graph. Well, now that's when x is less than or equal to one. That would be a second way to restrict the domain. If I restricted the domain that second way, the equation of the inverse for that second way would be again we can note that on the inverse the y values have to be less than or equal to 1 meaning that that square root has to go down forever, which fits with the negative square root. If we would draw it on the same graph, so if I move up and take points on my red graph, I have negative 1 comma 7, so I'd go to 7, negative 1. And it would be that bottom part. And the equation of that square root, the red square root graph, is with the negative out front. Because that is a reflection over the x-axis. So when you get questions like this, on your test or quiz, and I'm just going to zoom out to see everything. You're going to restrict the domain in two different ways. So I showed that with one and two. It's good to color code things on your graph so that this green section went with my notes here or some sort of labeling. 
so that this section went with this one and the red part went with that one. We switched x and y, and so this work that I did here in green actually was for both equations because that gave me both sets. But for restricted domain number one, I had to take the positive one. And for the second restricted domain, I take the negative one. These questions are almost always only with parabolas. And you always restrict your domain based on the vertex. So wherever your vertex is, do to the left of that is one restricted domain. Do to the right of it, sorry, right, left for the other one. Okay, questions for practice. Try number 10 and 12. 